10 Hardest Men Who Ever Played for Celtic. Celtic football club boasts a long and rich history. Some might even claim it's longer and richer than that of their cross-city rivals, Rangers, but not us, we think they are both equally great. Whilst Scottish football these days has a reputation for being more about fight and determination than it is skill and technique, most of the cast of Parkhead's illustrious history have tended to be of the flamboyant, fleet-footed kind. Players like Bobby Lennox, Kenny Dalglish and, more recently, Henrik Larsson, who were far more likely to be on the receiving end of a crunching tackle than they were to dish one out themselves. These are the ones who, through their elegance and panache, have helped build one of football's great trophy cabinets. Equally, no team can be successful without a smattering of characters. And, in a title-chasing team, character isn't just a byword for the hot-headed midfield enforcer who sets out to beak his opponent's legs. You can be a great player and a great hard man at once. A point Celtic's past has capably illustrated. 10. Mick McCarthy Ipswich manager Mick McCarthy comes across as a cuddly character in his post-match interviews, but beneath those dulcet Yorkshire tones lies a fierce competitor, whose two seasons at Parkhead during the late 80s yielded one league title and a pair of Scottish Cups. So, the former Ireland international is a winner, that was obvious from the way his brilliant wolf side dazzled the Premier League in the late 2000s, but was he really hard? In his playing days, Mick was an imposing centre half with a long stride, and an even longer head. You wouldn't have wanted to get too tight with him when attacking a set piece, put it that way. And he proved during his confrontation with Roy Keane at the 2002 World Cup that he was prepared to stand his ground against anyone. 9. Bobo Balda A towering centre-back, Bobo Balda spent eight years at Parkhead after joining Martin on L's side in 2001. The height of his career was also its biggest low, when he saw Ed in the UEFA Cup final with Jose Mourinho's Porto two years later, with his side going on to suffer an extra time loss. But did he cry about it? We don't know, honestly. The Guinean became one of Scottish football's most commanding defenders almost immediately after his arrival from Marseille. He was never the kind to stamp his feet around or butt heads with opposing players, but he didn't need to. He was simply a colossal footballer against whom few would be unwise enough to raise a hand. 8. David Hay Paisley's David Hay narrowly missed out on the chance to be a part of Celtic's famous Lisbon Lions, making his debut in 1968, a year after they conquered Europe with victory over Inter. His ability, though, was surely befitting of a continental champion, nominally a midfielder, the Scotland international was regularly deployed, in club and national colours, as a centre-half or right-back. Such was his aptitude for a resolute man-marking job. After originally leaving the club for Chelsea, Hay returned to the hoops in 1983, this time as manager, where he wrestled the title away from Alex Ferguson's Aberdeen three years later. He was mild-mannered and not the kind to rant and rave. But his tenacity on a pitch and the touchline has seen him remembered as one of Celtic's toughest ever characters. 7. John Hartson
Lumbering center forward John Hartson saw his exploits in a Celtic shirt largely overshadowed by those of his teammate Henry Clarson, but that wasn't entirely fair. The big Welshman netted more than 100 goals over the course of a five-year spell with the Hoops, including a quarter century in the season they nearly returned to the top of Europe in 2003. In terms of hardness, just ask the defenders he bullied inside the penalty box for a decade, or better yet, ask Heil Berkovic, who was kicked in the face by Hartson whilst they were teammates at West Ham. The 42-year-old, though, seems to be a reformed character these days, his most recent fight coming against cancer, which he also beat, and can now be seen doing the odd bit of punditry on the BBC. 6. Scott Brown Famous Celtic fan Frankie Boyle has had some mean things to say about Scott Brown in the past, but we'd like to see him say them to his face, mainly because it would be funny. The all-action midfielder has been captain of the hoops for seven years, and the Celtic armband is seldom put on the bicep of players, let alone for so long, who don't have a bit of fire in their belly. Brown puts himself about the pitch all day, and seldom backs out of a 50-50 duel, even with those who dwarf his 59 frame. The 32-year-old has also never shied away from the opportunity to throw some shade on Joey Barton, whom he mocked last year after a thumping old firm victory over Rangers, which makes him okay in our book. 5. Roy Aiton For 15 years and close to 700 games, Roy Aitken was part of the furniture at Parkhead, which is fitting because he shared the physical attributes of a small wardrobe. The imposing defender, affectionately known as the Bear, was famous for his ability to smother oncoming attacks with the plum, he was booked relatively infrequently, although he did play in an era when some of his contemporaries were nicknamed things like Bites Your Legs, Psycho and Murdering Jim, so it's fair to say disciplinary standards were still being refined. Aitken was friendly, not fearsome, but you don't get to play more than a decade at centre-half against those classic battering ram British centre-forwards without having some serious medal. 4. Thomas Graveson Thomas Graveson. Apart from being the answer to the question, who was the most unlikely Real Madrid signing of the last 20 years? Was also a tough-as-nails midfield enforcer who spent a year playing for Celtic after leaving the Galacticos in 2006. He was brought in by Gordon Strachan to replace the outgoing Roy Keane, and though he didn't have the same panache as the Irishman, he did have a comparable amount of bite. The Dane always looked like he could handle himself, mainly because of his shaven head, which gave him the appearance of Agent 47, and also Lee Carsley, for whom some think real scouts mistook him when they went to watch him play at Everton. It turns out we weren't far wrong, he nearly came to blows with little Robino during a training session in Madrid. 3. Paul Elliott Centre half Paul Elliott only spent two years on the books of Celtic and, which is more, they came during a rare barren spell which saw the club struggling to compete against their big spending cross-city rivals. Yet Parkhead fans still fondly remember the Englishman as a tough tackling, no-nonsense defender and an otherwise nondescript team. Elliot was a commanding presence inside both penalty boxes, but he also had a streak of class to his game that took him to Italy in 1987, 
two years before he rocked up at Celtic. You had to be tough to be a footballer in the rough and tumble of the 1980s, but the mental fortitude needed to withstand racist chanting from its hooligan heavy stands is something most of us will never understand. The ex who had steel, and lots of it. Two. Roy Keane. If you've ever watched Roy Keane sitting beside Adrian Chiles on ITV then you'll know that the former Manchester United captain is an impatient man at the best of times. And if you've ever watched him play then you'll know that, on the pitch, he had more than just words to back up his piercing stare. The Irishman was only at Celtic for about a minute, not enough time to seriously maim many of his SPL opponents, at any rate, but there's no shortage of footage from his old Trafford days to evidence why he garnered a reputation for being one of football's hard men long before. His knee height, studs up challenge on Man City South and challenge. Allegedly an act of vengeance after the Norwegian accused him of play acting three years prior, is perhaps the most notable example. 1. Johan Jelby Johan Jelby acquired the nickname Big Dolph during his time at Parkhead. The inference being that he bore an uncanny resemblance to Hollywood action star and fellow sweet Dolph Lundgren. And when you're told that you look like Ivan Drago, you know you come from pretty good stock. The center half measured 66 which, apart from making his head a magnet for the ball inside both penalty boxes, also saw him become one of Scotland's hardest footballers during the eight years he played for Celtic from 1996 to 2004. Jelby was so popular in the east side of Glasgow that he was welcomed back in 2010 as assistant manager to Neil Lennon. And you can guarantee that the players all knew where they stood with their new second-in-command. 